Okay. Call order of a work session of Goodyear City Council, Monday, September 28, 2009. Uh, all members of council are in attendance. All uh, items listed are for discussion only. No action can and will be taken. We have one item on our agenda, and that's the uh, city center phase one project. And uh, pass it on to the city manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. We have a relatively long presentation this evening. I will try to get done within 40 minutes or so, and you would then have 50 minutes uh, of that time for questions or that. So hopefully that will be enough time. Um, Um, since we're in the process of determining if we can begin building our long planned city center despite the sad state of the economy, tonight's presentation is primarily going to deal with how we might finance and pay for the various options we're considering for the city center as well as other key capital improvement projects. We will start by reviewing our funding sources, followed by an overview of our assessed valuation and property tax rates to advise you of our debt service payment capabilities. We will also discuss the amount of bond authorization available. We will review the capital and O&M costs of the city center alternatives so we can determine which appears the most viable. We will also review the capital and O&M costs of projects in the CIP that are competing with city center for funding including emerging priorities. When the presentation is completed, as I mentioned, we should have about 45 or 50 minutes left for your benefit. Oops. We're going to start tonight's presentation with three key funding sources that the city has at its disposal to finance capital projects. First, we can borrow money by selling general obligation bonds, often referred to as GO bonds. Another source are funds that we have set aside that have been collected as development fees frequently called impact fees. They are one-time fees that we collect from developers when they build a house or a building so that there is a contribution to the city to pay for the increased demand that unit will make on our basic services. These are fees that are paid so that growth can pay for growth. Our general fund is made up primarily of taxes, both sales taxes and property taxes, that we collect throughout the year. While it is allowable to use the general fund money to pay for debt, we try to limit the amount of debt that we carry in the general fund since that is the primary fund we use to operate the city. Currently, we have $6.4 million in debt service being paid by the general fund. That consists of $919,000 for City Hall and Fire Station. $3.3 million for the ballpark for the Indians, $2.3 million for the ballpark for the Reds, and in addition, the subsidy for the ballpark is budgeted for $2.135 million. Since finance can be very hard to understand for anyone without a finance background, and since government financing is very different from how it is done in the private sector, I thought I would try to compare the process a family goes through in buying a home and what process the city goes through in order to finance a building or building its capital project. Step one addresses how we both go about borrowing money. If a family wants to build a house, it takes out a mortgage. The most common method of borrowing for a city gen is general obligation bonds, GO bonds. The city sells the bonds to investors and uses the money from the sale to build capital projects. A family's total income determines how much they can borrow. For a city, it is the total assessed valuation of all property in the city, both homes and commercial, that determines how much the city can borrow. This is because that value determines the dollar amount collected in secondary property tax, which is used to make these bond payments. Voters must vote in a bond election to give the city the authority to sell GO bonds in various categories such as for public safety, streets, water, and public facilities. At this time, $45.6 million worth of GO bonds for public facilities have been authorized 
by voters in four different elections noted here. 1988, 2.5, 1994, 4.1, 2012 uh, million, 2004, 27000000 million. That's a total of $45.6 million. Only $400,000 has ever been used, and that was for a portion of the Public Works Administration building. So almost all of the authorized amount is left, or $45.2 million. A family's total income and their net worth determines how much they can qualify to borrow, or it should be what they, what they do. <laughs> For a city, no comments about the banking industry. For a city, the full cash value of all property in the city, homes and commercial, and its property tax rate determines how much the city can qualify for. And let's examine how that works. The county assessor goes around to each piece of property, residential and commercial, in a city each year to determine its value for property tax purposes. The full cash value of all that property is used to determine how much a city is qualified to borrow. Each year, the city council sets the limit on its property tax rate. The current rate is limited to $1.60 per $100 assessed value of each house and has remained at this rate for several years. The city's overall property tax has two components, primary and secondary. The primary por portion goes into the general fund and goes toward paying for everyday operations of the city except for fee-based services such as water and sanitation. That tax rate right now is 0.6323. The secondary property tax is used only to make payments on GO bonds the money that the city has borrowed. This rate is presently nine, uh, 0.9677. The secondary assessed valuation determines the most money the city could qualify to borrow. So, to summarize, the primary property tax runs the city and the secondary property tax pays the debt. Therefore, because this presentation is about financing debt, we will only be talking about the secondary property tax and the secondary assessed valuation throughout the rest of this discussion. As we said, secondary property taxes can only be used to pay for geo bond debt payments. In other words, we cannot use that money to pay for positions in the city or for city services or city programs. The total amount we can borrow is based upon our secondary assessed valuation. The higher the valuation, the more we can borrow. To forecast what our secondary assessed valuation will be in the future, we must look at how it is trending. On this chart, we are demonstrating the, historically, the historical secondary assessed valuation, SAV. In 2005-2006, the SAV was just under $400 million. Last year, it was just over $1 billion. In 2009 and 2010, the SAV is down slightly and is predicted to go down another $100 million next year. Much has been built in our city since 2005-2006 that will keep our future SAV at much higher levels than in 2005 and 2006, even with the poor economic conditions we're experiencing. Longer-term projections will be covered a little later in this presentation. Just as a family's gross income is used to determine how much they can borrow, but rather the amount of income left after other loans and debts such as car loans, second mortgages, and college are paid determines how much a family can borrow. The same goes for a city. Just because our secondary assessed valuation is nearly a billion dollars, we certainly can't borrow all that. <clears throat> we are limited to the amount of money generated by our secondary property tax rate. As an example, let's look at this year's actual secondary property tax. Based on our secondary assessed valuation of almost a billion dollars and our secondary tax rate of 0.9677 per hundred dollars, we receive $9.5 million to pay for debt this year. It is important to note there is a 1.5 to a one and a half to two year lag from when property is assessed and taxed 
to when the city receives proceeds from it. This SAV in 2009-2010 is not based on housing values in 2009, but rather the values in 2007. We'll explain this in detail on the next slide. <clears throat> this is the key chart for understanding when the money actually comes to the city as revenue. Activity year is the year when property assessments are performed. As of date is the date market of market conditions used to calculate tax bills. Tax year is the year when property owners receive their tax bills generated in the fall. Fiscal year is the fiscal year when the county pays the city the property taxes it has collected. So tax year 2009 tax bill reflects market conditions of January 1st, 2008 based on activity that occurred in 2007. This shows or demonstrates the year and a half to two year lag on property taxes. As a result, when the economy turns around, the city's budget will not realize that impact, the positive impact, until two years later. Just because we bring a certain amount of secondary property tax doesn't mean we can spend it all on debt. There are certain limitations on us, just as the many monthly payments a family has will really determine what they can afford to borrow. For a city, we even have stricter limitations. We are limited by state statute on how much we can borrow, no matter whether we have the ability to pay or not. And those limits are 6% of the budget and limit of 20% of the budget. The Arizona Constitution limits the city's bonded debt capacity to certain percentages. We can borrow up to 6% of our assessed value for pretty much, uh, excuse me, for public buildings. This includes such things as City Hall, Municipal Library, and Public Works facilities. But a city can borrow up to 20% of its assessed value for pretty much everything else except for public buildings. Water, sewer, parks, public safety, transportation, streets, and so forth. This limit is higher because there are thoughts, these are thought to be more basic core services and are more important than city buildings. For the city center phase one project, we must factor in the 6% limitation for the buildings we build. We will be limited by the 20% on the infrastructure improvements for streets, parks, and sewers, etc. Six percent of our assessed valuation this year is almost $59 million and is expected to decrease in the next few years. We have no control, the city has no control in adjusting these limits once they are set by state law. We can't have a vote of the people to adjust the limits at six percent and twenty percent. And those figures are indicated across the bottom of the uh, slide. And our limitation now is 58.9 million, 59 million. It will next year be an estimated 52.7 million. Then it will go down to 49.7 million. And in 12, it will go back or go down an additional 49.2 million. Then in 13, 14, it's our projections that it will start back up, but it will be a slow recovery. It will start back up at 50 million, and then in fiscal year 14 and 15, it will be 51.7 million. Of the overall $342.3 million in total bonding authority the voters have approved, we have borrowed 168.8 million. This leaves 51% of the authority untouched. When categories need more authorization than voters, have, than voters have already approved, we will have to go out for another bond election to gain additional voter authorization. The vote of the citizens in authorizing the city to issue bonds is not affected by the 6% and 20% limitations. But the city prioritizes what to spend the authorized bonds that, uh, that fell, fall within the 6% to 20% limitations, and also what we can cover with the debt service payments available. Once we have authority to issue bonds from our citizens, there is a decision-making process that we must go through 
to determine when to issue the bonds and how much we can afford to pay. Our first step is to estimate our future secondary assessed valuation to determine how much secondary property tax revenue will be available to us in future years to repay the bonds. To make these estimates, we must make assumptions regarding future residential and commercial growth. The second step is to determine our debt capacity, financing methodology, and the risks associated with the financing method. We need to be able to predict how much money we will have available to pay for debt in the future in order to provide a recommendation on whether or not to proceed with capital projects. In order to estimate this dollar amount, some conservative assumptions have to be made. These are assumptions and not predictions of the future. These assumptions serve as a baseline for future assumption changes as these will invariably need to be adjusted. These are based upon, first, information from the county assessor's office, which stated they expect to see double-digit declines in res residential assessed valuations again for next year, 2011. Additionally, they expect some declines to happen and in commercial and industrial assessed values also. We also use financial forecasting models based on Arizona Joint Legislative Budget Committee's information, blue chip economic forecast from, you know, for, for the Phoenix area, Zillow.com, and other predictions from uh, other online economic forecasters. We review all of those. We have also analyzed current construction trends within the city of Goodyear. Our baseline assumptions for next year are 600 single family units will be built. This tracks closely to what we are doing today. These numbers are conservative because the market may take some time to absorb and occupy current vacancies. Commercial and industrial assessed value is projected at $12 million, down from where we are today due to expected declines in the market. Here are the residential assumptions for the next six years on which we have based our future financial forecasts. As you can see, the full cash value is expected to bottom out in activity year 2010, next year. But remember, city's tax revenues are almost two years behind, so we won't realize increased tax revenues until at least 2013 or 2014. When it comes to the commercial sector, we are hearing that big declines in value are yet to come. We are predicting that the bottom will come in 2011, with slight gains occurring after that. We have not included anything for the mall in these assumptions in order to be extremely conservative. This chart used all the assumptions we have just shown to you for both residential and commercial property to project future secondary assessed valuations. As you can see, the red line is predicting that the secondary assessed valuation will be lower than it is now for many years. The first two points on the chart are the actual SAV for 08 and 09 and 09 and 010. All the other points are forecasts. Note that we are forecasting the lowest point to occur in fiscal year 12, 13, and then gradually increase after that. This chart forecasts through fiscal year 15, 16, and remember that our revenues lag one point, uh, one and a half to two years behind these assessed valuation years. Assessed valuation is highly complex and are variable depending on many different conditions. As mentioned, baseline assumptions have to be used in order to predict the financial future. In order to determine long-range projections for debt service capacity behind, beyond uh, fiscal year 15 and 16, we used historical growth rate trends from pre-boom years. We wanted to go back as far as 1994 to look at growth trends <laughs> since we were coming out of another recession at that time. Granted, it was not nearly as deep a recession as this one, but the gen general growth trends should be comparable. We based our forecasting on the activity years of 1994, 
to 2003, before the boom really began. The 10-year average secondary assessed value growth was 22.24%. Back then, as compared to the boom years, which showed increases as high as 54%. So we have used the 22% number for our forecasts in the out years beyond fiscal year 15 and 16. Note that growth estimates will be continually examined and refined as data becomes available to better pinpoint future projections. Just for reference, fiscal year 06 and 07 which is as of the year 2004, had growth of 26.45%. Fiscal year 07 and 08, which is as of 2005, was increase of 54.42%. I mean, this is incredible. Cities don't see these kind of increases. Fiscal year 08 and 09, which is as of year 2006, the increase was 30.94%. <clears throat> As shown here, we've predicted our secondary assessed valuation next year and applied our secondary property tax rate to it. This enables us to predict our secondary tax revenue that can be used for debt service. As you see, the assessed valuation is estimated at $878,642,679 times the secondary tax rate of 90 0.38 cents, and it will generate secondary tax revenue of $7.9 million as compared to this year generating $9.5 million. This chart shows the estimated secondary property tax revenue for the next five years. From this total estimate, we have to subtract out the existing $4.5 million in annual bond debt payments that we currently have to repay with secondary tax revenues. Then we have to plan for the most conservative amount of debt capacity by looking at the lowest year to come. In this case, fiscal year 12 and 13, and it's approximate $2.3 million estimate. This gives us the all-important debt service available. This is what we really can afford to pay. No matter how much we could qualify to borrow, we can only pay this amount, and that's what really matters. To determine how much debt service is available for city center, we had to start with $55 million based on the amount of GO bond authorization. You've seen this chart before. It is the authorization and the budget that we've been working towards of $66.3 million. $45 million of it is in GO bond authority for buildings, and an additional $10 million in bonds was in the infrastructure column. As we proceed toward the decision of a go, no go for the City Center Phase 1 project, we have continued to analyze the city's financial position to determine if the $55 million was still viable. Earlier, I showed you this chart that anticipates declines in our assessed valuation over the next few years. We applied that, that projection over the gold bars on this chart. The gold bars represent the dollar amounts per year in debt service that would be required for traditional financing of the full $55 million in debt in bonds. The red line demonstrates the funds that we forecast will be available based on the assumptions in the secondary assessed valuation tax. As you can see by the red line, the projected secondary property tax revenue forecasted will not be enough to support the debt service on the $55 million over the next few fiscal years. We reviewed the total amount of bonds that we can sell based upon the debt payment capacity available within the debt service of $2.3 million that we showed you a couple of charts ago. That is what it would be at the lowest point in the next five years. There are two financing options that have been evaluated to demonstrate the maximum bond amounts that could be issued to stay within the $2.3 million debt service capacity projections. This first slide shows a traditional loan financing model 
principal and interest over a 20-year period, which is a typical bond, a GO bond, with an assumed interest rate of 5%. Under this financing model, the city would be able to sell a maximum of $30 million in bonds in order to stay within the projected available debt service capacity. You can see here that the first year we would be able to absorb higher debt payments or that the first year that we would be able to absorb higher payments would be fiscal year 16 and 17 with our capacity expanding thereafter. This is also the year we should begin to receive, beginning to receive payment from the Arizona Sports and Tourism Authority for our ballpark investment. This second slide shows a much more aggressive option. Five-year interest-only financing for the first five years with both principal and interest being paid for the remaining 15-year term at a 5% interest rate. Under this financing model, the city would be able to sell $45 million in bonds and stay within the projected debt service capacity based on the $2.3 million available. Again, our assessed valuation is expected to grow in fiscal year 16 and 17, and the city should have additional geo bond capacity at that time. Just to make a point here, that this traditional financing is principal and interest. It's based on what we can afford, and it says that we can afford $30 million. This, we are trying to show a way that we could do it, we aren't recommending this, but it would be interest only. Our concern, of course, is that if these projections are wrong and the interest only isn't enough at the end, then we have to go into our general fund to pay for it. For financing any of the capital projects at this time, it is recommended to proceed with financing of option one, which is traditional financing of a 20-year term with conventional principal and interest payments. This strategy is recommended because it's more conservative, it's less risky during a volatile economy, and it reduces risk of uh, declining bond rating. As discussed, 30 million is the most we can afford to issue in the bonds right now according to this analysis. During the August 24th work session, we discussed the various city center facility phasing options as shown on the left side of the chart and analyzed what we may be able to do within our debt payment capacity. Along with our original scope, we looked at options such as doing the library in a park, the library only, and a city hall with a library on the second floor. Of course, we can also defer all elements of the project. Also at that meeting, the council asked what other projects are competing for this same $30 million as well as what are the estimated impacts on our operational budget related to proceeding with any of these projects. We've conducted extensive analysis since that work session on August 24th. Projects listed in the capital improvement program, not including water and wastewater and streets, were reviewed both in the five-year funded and those out years, and the meetings were held with directors, the city manager's office, and finance staff to analyze each of these projects, discuss priorities, and determine what authorized funds could be utilized. The list on the right shows the competing CIP projects that were considered and also which statutory limitation they would count again, so the 6% figure limitation or the 20%. For those that say 6% or 20%, a decision would be made at the time of design and or functions affected, for example, public safety, based upon the elements that are needed and included. In addition, data was compiled regarding the estimated O&M costs related to these projects and also any cost savings that may be experienced by bringing any of these projects online. Just quickly to review those projects that are the four-acre civic park in the 20% category city's telephone system, 6% or 20%, I should say and or, <clears throat> telecom 911 facility, 20%, 
Public Works Corporate Yard, 6%. Public Safety Administration Facility, 20%. Public Safety Training Facility, 20%. Police Fire Radio, 20%. Estrella Mountain Ranch Park, Phase 2, 20%. Bullard Wash I-10 to Yuma, 20%. The El Rio Water Course, 20%. HTE replacement, this is our computer system, HRIS, is 6 to 20 percent. Universities, 6 percent. Performing Arts Center, 6 percent. And the multi-gen facility, 6 to 20 percent. I'm sorry, excuse me, John. I, I think I did not hear you. Is the library considered the 6 percent or the 20? 6 percent. These are the recommended CIP projects in order of priority that must be completed within the next five years based upon their criticality or current contractual obligations. These priorities may differ from previously established priorities in the CIP, and these are projects that the city in our estimation cannot function without. For example, Police Fire Radio is a partnership with Phoenix. Fire has to be on the system by July 1st of 2011, so it needs to be fully funded at that time. The city's entire telephone system has to be completely replaced. The plan was to capitalize this cost in the construction of the new city hall. However, we do not uh, move forward with that. We have to fund the replacement of this system elsewhere. It's becoming obsolete, and the voicemail support reaches its end of life in spring 2010. In addition, we do not have additional capacity to add new foreign phones to our existing system. Telecom 911, the existing facility will cease to meet the required day-to-day -day functionality in approximately three years. This used to be part of the Public Safety Administration building project, but it needs to be moved up. The new facility could be placed on the city's property near the 157th Street plant. Avenue plant, which is also planned for the future location of the Public Works corporate yard. To locate the Telecom 911 facility at the 157th location, we must master plan the site and build the infrastructure for the Telecom 911 facility, which also includes some support for Phase 1 Public Works corporate yard. The HTE HRIS replacement system, Phase 1, is a priority. It includes funding for a comprehensive business analysis of what our replacement system will need to support. This is a very detailed, time-consuming task and must be started within the next three years in order to move forward within the next five to seven years to obtain a replacement system. The breakdown of funding sources is shown on this chart. As you can see, a large portion of these projected costs can be paid for from development fees. The main projects that would compete with City Center would be the $7.3 million in geo bonds needed to fund the police fire radio system and a small portion of the telecom 911 system. The O&M for these projects is $1.7 million, primarily due to the $635,000 annual leaseback on the phone system and the $800,000 annual costs for the radio system. Note that the geo bonds being sold are related to public safety projects and would therefore come under the 20% limitation. So it will not affect the 6% limitation that we're working with for city center. Assuming these critical CIP projects were approved by the city council to move to the head of the pack, the city will have approximately $22.7 million in geo bonding that can be issued for the city center phase one project and still stay within the projected 2.3 million annual debt service payment capacity. For city center, it was easily apparent that we could not go from $55 million geo bond funding source down to 22.7 million. So the team studied several other options to see what might come closest to the $22.7 million bonding limitations. One of the key criteria was to try to include a library since this is the number one service that the citizens told us they wanted in the last citizen survey. 
We looked at just the library plus the four acre park. Just the library with no park and the city hall with the library on the second floor. As shown on this page, the only options that come close to being affordable are the standalone library option with or without a park and there will still need to be value engineering needed to get the cost down to a target of $22.7 million. The park can be built with park development fees rather than geo bonds. Its O&M will be $34,000 per year. As per our IGA with Maricopa County Library District, the library O&M costs other than utilities, custodial, facility, and IT maintenance are covered through fiscal year 11 and 12. Thereafter, upon opening the library, our O&M costs are as follows. Fiscal year 12, 500,000, 13, 760,000, 14, 1 million, 15, 1.3 million, and 16, 1.5 million. O&M costs for City Hall are estimated at 1.2 million. However, we will save approximately a million dollars in the Bonita leases when we give those up. So the net new cost of O&M for the City Hall would be $200,000. A possible revised scope for City Center Phase 1 that stays within our debt payment capacity could include the following elements covered over the next several slides. First, a freestanding library, 30,000 square foot building, just like planned in the original Phase 1. The scope of the infrastructure would include the remaining the same as the originally proposed in City Center Phase 1. It would provide an area to create a sense of place and make it more mar marketable for the private sector. By the time the City Hall is built, the landscaping will be quite lush and mature, adding to the character of the downtown. Inner Loop Road, the actual street name to be determined, would be included in this phase. The retail street, the actual street name to be determined, would also be included in this phase. Two finished parking lots would be included. Decomposed granite on the City Hall Phase 1 site would be included. Decomposed granite on one parking lot site would be included. Landscaped plaza area next to the future City Hall site would also be included. The turf area on the City Hall Phase 2 site would be included. Landscaping and turf up to the Estrella Human intersection would be included. And finally, the revised City Center scope would include a Phase 1 of the Four Acre Civic Park behind the library. This was not originally planned until phase three, but we thought it important to bring back the park, to bring it online as soon as possible so that the city could hold events there and the people could be getting to recognize it as a place for meeting as a city center. Development fees would pay for this portion of the, of the option. Ron, does this include all the infrastructure? Yes. For the entire city center with this? Yes. Um, implications for city center. The revised scope would include a standalone library, the associated infrastructure to give it a sense of place, phase one of the four acre civic park, geo bond maximums of 22.7 million, well within the 55 million authorized. <clears throat> Debt service fits within the 2.3 million that we can afford. 1.7 million for city center phase one and 600,000 <clears> for priority CIP projects and new O&M charges $466,000 upon opening of the park. One question. When we're talking about the library uh, and the co total cost of this, is the cost of books included in that figure? Yes. It is. Every, these numbers include everything fully furnished. Because we don't want to get to opening up a library with no books. Yeah. That's really <coughs>
Oops, wrong way. Based uh, estimate assessed valuation of fiscal year 10 and 11, we could sell $52 million in bonds within the 6% category. Assuming that we would sell $30 million in geo bonds for both the revised phase one library, no city hall, and the priority CIP projects, only 13 million would be used under the 6% building limitations. The remaining 17 million would count toward infrastructure or public safety and would not go against the 6% limitation. Thus, we would have $39 million left under our 6% limitation, which should be enough to build City Hall in the next five or six years if we choose to, assuming we do, do not build any other buildings before City Hall. So let's talk about City Hall. When can we build it? It looks like we could anticipate opening it in fiscal year 1617. Assumed cost of the building would be almost $35 million. This assumes inflation and future higher building costs than today. We would need additional debt capacity to repay the loan. We would need another $2.8 million in secondary property tax revenue to cover the $35 million in bonds. We could begin construction in late fiscal year 14 and 15 and carry interest costs forward as part of the project. We project enough bond authority voted on by the people, $32 million for public facilities would remain after the revised city center phase one was completed. <clears throat> we would have capacity within our 6% limitation as long as other buildings are not built. We must have the ability to pay for additional new O&M. Again, estimated at $1.2 million for the city hall, but that would be a savings of a million dollars from the Veneta properties that we would be vacating. Therefore, the net new O&M would be $200,000. While we may not be able to afford to build the city hall right now, it's important that we keep this as a priority facility for the near future. The more density we can create in the downtown, the higher the value of the land that Lankford takes down a piece of property for private development and pays us. This is evident in the economic impact study applied economics conducted for both the public and the private facilities proposed for this development. City Hall proved to be a very important driving factor in bringing the private development to the city center area and maximizing the advantages the private development brings to the project. You'll see that the greatest <coughs> economic negative impacts to Goodyear's coffers and its community are the first nine to 10 years and seem to flatten out as the years go on. Per applied economic study, this assumes a library and park built in 2011 and a city hall in 2016. It shows the number of jobs, direct and indirect, that would be created, 1,288 for the public facilities, 3,634 for the private development. Uh, total direct and indirect construction income, 65.1 million public facilities and 183.8 million for the private development. The total direct and indirect construction economic activity 144 million for public facilities and 407 million for private facilities. If you analyze the short term effect on the value of the land leases over the next 13 years, the city would lose approximately $4.4 million worth of private development revenue in that time frame. Building City Hall would definitely speed up surrounding private development if we could afford to build it. For reference purposes, the land lease payments are equal to 4% of the land value in the first 30 months or until 95% of building occupancy for a given phase. Lease payments equal to 8% of the original land value over the next five years. And then that increases by 10% in every subsequent five-year period. We also looked at it over a 95-year period. And why 95 years? That's because that's the length of the partnership with Lankford and Associates. 
I doubt that any of us will get to see that. When calculated across the next 95 years, the impact of delaying City Hall for five years until 2016 seems minimal. In net present value, meaning the value of today's dollars in 2106, it would mean a difference of only 1.5 million for land lease revenues and 8.3 million for the net fiscal impact, including land leases and all other general fund and gas, <coughs> excuse me, and gas tax revenues. Now to summarize where we are. We have only 2.3 million a year for debt service until about five years from now when we could afford more. That 2.3 million buys $30 million in geo bond debt with no risk, with traditional 20 year loan period at 5%. Priority CIP projects will require 7.3 million of that geo bond <coughs> debt, leaving approximately 22.7 million for the city center phase one. Only a freestanding library, a neighboring uh, four acre park, and the area's infrastructure, including roads and extensive landscaping, appears to be the only affordable option at this time. More value engineering will have to be done to get the library's cost down. It's still a little above what we can afford. We have enough voter authorization to do the revised phase one and the priority projects that will need more authorization to build City Hall. We should have enough room within the 6% limitation on geo bonds for buildings to do revised phase one now and the city hall in five years, assuming no other facilities are built utilizing the geo bond. We will have to absorb 1.7 million of O&M for the priority CIP projects, whether or not we do the revised city center phase one plan phased in over the next five years. We will have to take on an additional $466,000 in O&M for the four acre park and library when they come online. Additional phased in costs for O&M in the library begin in fiscal year 13 implemented in 25% segments. City Hall could be built within five or six years if it is affordable because it will help speed up private development to stimulate the economy. We looked at the estimated cost of just the individual buildings that are part of the city center area to try to provide an estimate of the impact that these facilities would have. City Hall estimated costs at this time are approximately $35 million. Other building costs are estimated based on information provided or from other similar facilities. For example, the multi-gen is based on the example from Glendale. Performing Arts Center estimate is based on a wide range of costs and types of theaters that we have gathered over the last couple years. Higher education is an estimate based on a figure discussed initially with ASU. The next steps are on October 6th and 7th. We have public meetings, public open houses, from six to eight each of the evenings. And those will be held in, both of them held in the room 117, Brian? Yes. Both of them in 117 of City Hall. On October 19th, the work session at 5 p.m. at which we will review more complete capital and O&M costs of the best phase one options, comparative costs of constructing in a down economy, and there are significant advantages. Comparative costs to other city halls, design of possible options, lead levels reached, traffic study results and the introduction of roundabouts, and the Lankford branding study results. On 1026 at 5 p.m., if more information is needed, or 1026 at 6 p.m., we will have the revised final project scope and costs, projected financial CIP and o and obligations, and a go or no go decision. Or in the alternative, on November 9th at 6 p.m., we will have a go or no go decision uh, if we don't have the 1026 meeting. 
Ms. Mayor, sorry for the length of time, but that's the presentation. Very informative. Thank you. Any comments from Langford? Mr. Mayor, Council, um, very, it was a very informative presentation, and uh, we, uh, we appreciate the time you guys have spent, and we hope we've been helpful, I think we have, in trying to figure all this out. And we are very supportive as your partners of whatever decision you make and, and whatever time period you make them. However, having said that, I do have a few points I'd like to make. Um, and City Manager Fishback certainly made these points several times. The City Hall itself to us is the uh, kind of the linchpin of the vision. Uh, and the City Hall uh, is the kind of the, the engine certainly that drives the uh, private development as, as pointed out by, by Mr. Fishback. And the, um, uh, well, as they say, we'll support any decision you make, and I think the plan that's, that you've arrived at uh, is a feasible plan. It, it, it gives the infrastructure that's, that's important. I think we chatted uh, with the staff about the fact that even if we go with the library and infrastructure, let's be sure that we build infrastructure that is really the high-quality high infrastructure that we all want because it's permanent. Whenever we then take off and go from there and build on the, onto that, other public and private facilities at least – that high quality materials in place, and we've set the plate, as you've said. Uh, so again, we're 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 ready to go to to continue to work with you on that. But the city hall, uh, as I said, has been the linchpin. It's been the linchpin of our business arrangement from day one. Uh, as I'm sure you probably realize, the the time uh, elements up, upon which we are obligated to either le lease land and start development or pay extension payments is all key to the city hall. If the city hall is delayed, then those, that kind of activity is, is delayed. Uh, so it, it's um, important to look at all the ideas, and, and we might have some ideas and, and work with your staff in the ensuing uh, couple of weeks that might help uh, further this effort. But I, I just want to be uh, uh, clear that we're anxious to work any way we can to see if there's a way to make City Hall work first. And I, maybe there's not. It, 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 it doesn't look uh, good. But the, uh, the, uh, the financing structure, for instance, uh, uh, is one area that the, the uh, interest only for five years could, in fact, allow another $15 million of, of, of bonded indebtedness. The million dollar a year savings that the city manager points out, the minute you move into City Hall, you save a net million dollars from lease payments. Uh, so, th so those two together could, could get us to a, a number of, um, of you know, in, in the 45, 43 to 45 million dollar range, I think. And again, these, we've just looked at this report recently, so these are somewhat kind of quickly generated numbers from our side. But it, it occurs to us that that's an idea. It is a little more, uh, kind of aggressive in the sense of using the interest only concept but it's it's important to realize that that it, the report that that you guys have generated the staff has generated assumes that the bottom of the industrial commercial market is in 2011 and I believe that I think that's a reasonable estimate estimate that's when we should be building our first project our first private project or maybe even maybe even our second pri private project and it the, the city hall is so key to us that I, I think that that is going to get delayed. It just, uh, without the city hall, we won't be able to do that, at least at the densities that we have all looked at. The densities drive a significant amount of the, of the net physical, Im fiscal impact to the city because that, the way the formula works for ground lease payments is the, the ground lease payments aren't based on today's value. They're based on the value that will be estimated at the time we elect to take down the parcel. We thought that was fair going into this thing. You guys thought it was fair, and I think it is an extremely fair way to do it. And, and, the, and the value is determined by what we intend to build. And what we intend to build are the kinds of projects that you, you haven't seen in, in, the, in the valley because of the densities that we are assuming. And we assume those densities because we believe strongly that the combination of the public commitment and our commitment to this location will allow us to build densities reflective, reflected on our plans that we've looked at 
that are higher. That drives higher land values, and that's the basis that your land payments are based on. It isn't what somebody else might say that five-acre parcel is worth, assuming a traditional two-story tilt-up or whatever. It's based on what we intend to build and what we will permit to build, and it's a residual land value calculation that generates the land value upon which we pay the 8%. So it's go on and on about that, but I think it's important to note that the the uh, the densities that we believe will be created by the development of City Hall are significantly higher than what otherwise could be created, and that drives the significantly higher land payments to the city. So all of this, you know, this whole uh, kind of uh, economic engine starts moving when the City Hall is, is under construction. And I'm afraid it doesn't start moving until the City Hall is under construction. Maybe. Maybe not, but even if it does, I think it's not going to be to the to the densities that we all hope for and envision. So, you know, I'm 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 sure uh, 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 the, uh, Brian and, and Mr. Fishback and others probably agree with everything I just said. There's maybe not too much that can be done about it, but I did want to at least express those feelings. And again, we, we we've thought about a series of things that maybe we can chat about in the next week or two before, or three, before the final decision is made and, and as to how we might be able to still get this done at, at, the, at the larger scale, if, if possible. Um, I can't finish my comments without reminding, and I think you guys have said it before, the construction cost market today is lower than it's going to be, uh, has been uh, for a long time, and lower than it will be in the next four or five years, or even three to four years. The interest rate environment is lower. So again, if the if, there, if the capital were there, now's the time. And I'm not I'm speaking to the choir. I understand that. But if the capital were there, now's the time to build these build a city hall project and the library because of because of the economics. I think the other thing that's that's the applied economics folks that uh, we work with on at your request to to do the net uh, incentives or net uh, tax or net revenues really to the city. You know, it, it looks like once we get going, in five or six years, there's $3 million a year, roughly, of net physical positive impact to the city from the private development. So, you know, part of that is certainly the ground lease payments. The rest of it is lease excise payments and et cetera. So, again, I, it's, it, it, to the extent that, uh, that there is a way to figure this out, I, I urge us to continue to work on it. We'll support the decision you 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 make if if, if it's the uh, library and infrastructure only. Then we'll certainly support that and work with you as best uh, we can to make that a success. But I I I didn't want to uh, not express our feelings about the importance of City Hall. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, we in invite the uh, citizens to comment uh, during the uh, six and seven October open meetings. Uh, not open meetings. Work public sessions. Public, public, public work. Okay, public work public sessions. Forums. Public, public forums. Public forums. Okay, and those will be in one seventeen in City Hall. Okay, uh, so I, I think what we're asking for now is this council uh, give us uh, your feeling on what you've heard. And we don't need to derive a consensus or anything like that. We just need to make sure that each of us is clear on what we've heard and go from there. Where would you like to start? I'll start. Go. A couple questions. Um, the 466000 in O&M, does that include the additional cost for both the library and the park? Yes. Okay, so that's net. That's after the county pays its share of. Yes. Okay. Would we be using the development fees collected uh, for the library? And I don't recall. Do we have park development fees? Yes. Okay, will we be using those to help bring down yes, the cost will. of the bond, yes, bond we sale? Yes, Okay. Uh, also, I just want to mention, I, I really believe the general fund is taxed, and I'm not quite sure whether 2011 is the bottom of the commercial. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But uh, I, I kind of lean towards any where we have minimum risk to the general fund, whatever we come up with, and I, I tend to lean towards traditional financing. I'm not a big proponent of interest only, just, just to throw that out, okay? A um, couple other things on the, I guess, on the financing. Currently, we're collecting about $9.5 million in, in uh, GOs, correct? Uh, in secondary, secondary property tax. Secondary property tax. 
And we talk about an existing debt service of 4.5 where we're showing the difference on how we can pay the 2.3. Is that additional, the water bonding that's finding its way over to the water? Yes, it is. Okay, and I assume those rates are covered the way we already have in place for that? Yes, they are. Okay, um, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Council Member uh, Antonio. Sorry, I have to come back through my notes here. Am I on? Okay. The, no the notion of a, of a, let me back up. Remind me our terms on the on the deal points that we have with Langford again. We can delay this a month, six years, months, yes. a year, but any time over the next three, three years, years, if conditions change, we can we can make that go <clears throat> no go decision at any time during that three year period. That it's not correct. like we have to delay a year. Okay. Has there been any discussion about um, the pairing or timing of the private sector if we were to commit to City Hall? Uh, has that discussion furthered since the last time we right. got together? Oh, <clears throat> yes, uh, Council Member Antoniak. We have had those discussions both on the existing agreement, how that may change, uh, certainly uh, any amendments we may have to bring back to Council, as well as the timing of their development as well as, uh, um, as was pointed out earlier. Okay, but jointly look going after perhaps a corporate campus environment or something of that nature this may be wishful thinking on my part right now but uh, have we talked about joint economically you know development marketing the site such that you know yes I see yes. you nodding. yes, yes. Uh, okay. mr. Antoniak yes we have talked about how we would joint market this currently there's a branding marketing study going on by Lakeford and Associates uh, we've been part of those meetings it's fully funded by by the Lankford team at this point and that will be subject uh, that we bring back to council later in October. Okay. When we talked about on page 22 of your presentation, John, you talked about the um, the ten-year average growth of 22 and a quarter percent, and that's what we used as our assumptions. Did uh, curiosity? Did you look back 20 years and look at what the 20-year average was instead of the 10-year average? That may be really conservative by doing that, but no, we went back to 1994. Okay. And did it change? Did it? How many years? Eighteen. Went back to 1994. Well, 96, 97, but that would be activity year 94, right? Okay. All right. I'd be kind of curious, just anecdotally, to know what the previous five years did, if it was 15 or if it was 20. I know that might be a little bit of effort on folks' part, but you've already got half of it done. I imagine it's a spreadsheet, but I don't know if it increases it or decreases it. Um, it will decrease it. Though. It will decrease it. That's yeah, my guess. I'm curious what that number was personally. You know, I, I tend to agree with Joe's statements. I can't really argue with them. Um, the general fund discussion about it being taxed. There's no doubt the general fund's taxed. We've had that dis the discussion over our six-month budgeting process last the, for this fiscal year. Um, uh, the, the interest-only thing um, that was presented by Mr. Lankford uh, is concerning, but at the same time, um, Mr. Langford hinted at some things. I'd really encourage you, staff, to um, get the anecdotal stuff that we just heard about during the discussion down on paper and presented to us, so we see the full, the full 300. I mean, you get a great presentation. No, no doubt about that. I'm not, I'm not doubting your presentation, John. So, um, but I'd like to see uh, the full 360 degree kind of perspective here. We've got the public discussion going on the 6th and the 7th. We've had the discussion internally, which was presented to us just now. But I'd really like to see the third piece of that pie for me, which is Langford. And, and what are the, some of those creative options that perhaps they can bring to the table um, to bear? So We certainly will. Um, generally, putting a bunch of infrastructure in the ground and sitting on it for five years, while maybe prudent given the construction costs, I'm still chewing on that. Well, we're doing it more, more from a standpoint of a sense of place and to induce, if possible, the private marketplace around us with the properties that are to be developed. Uh, because we are talking with Langford about timing and stuff like that. And there may be some things, but who can say whether that will happen for sure or not. But it's better to put that in now in our estimation than it is later. Yeah, I, no doubt we need to create a sense of place at that corner and in that part of town. So I agree, I agree with you there. I'm sure I'll have more thoughts, Mayor, but that's it for now. Councilmember Souza. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
Well, it's a long report, John, and I appreciate it. That yeah, is disappointing in its entirety. <clears throat> I just don't see how we can go. I don't see how we can go any further than we have up to this point. It would take us a miracle to get funds to move any one of these projects along without damaging some, some projects that are important to other members of our staffs. So I guess we just wait and see. The economy helps us out. So, and certainly, Mr. Mayor, it certainly puts the universities on hold, that's for sure. There's no money here for universities that I can see. And uh, well, that's, that's my position. And I'm just sorry to see that, you know, that we have to extend this thing years from now. You guys can come and put flowers on my grave because I wanted to see this so bad. Well, I'm certainly digesting everything that was just given to us, and it is disappointing. Um, not that it was exactly surprising, though. Um, you know, unfortunately, a couple years ago, the city had the ability to take risks, had the ability to go with different kinds of financing, the interest only. could have been a risk we could have handled. That's not something that we're stable enough to handle now. We need to stick with traditional ways. Um, I understand, uh, actually, Rob's thought about infrastructure. Putting it in the ground now and it not doing anything where financially might make sense, but if we're still having the vision with universities, I question technology. And, and I don't know how much infrastructure's technology would change in five years. And um, with all the other things that you were showing of putting this type of asphalt or that type of thing, you know, you, you show different um, layouts, will you be ripping everything back up <coughs> in five years to lay down new infrastructure, to take out plant life, whatever it may be, what, what would then be um, going to cost us at that point? I still need to digest this more and, and, and give better feedback later. Um, that's all I can say. Thank you, Mrs. Osborne. One, one comment, the only comment I would make is that from an infrastructure standpoint, technologically, probably the only change that we will see in five years is related to fiber optics, and we do have that incorporated into our infrastructure. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Cavalier. Yes. Thank you very much for the that's a nice presentation. as very detailed. Um, Mr. Langford brought us several new things that I would like to, to uh, pursue further. As a matter of fact, there's so much on what he has stated that we need to look into that I, I would like to see if we could set up some private meetings or a couple of us together, however he'd like to do it. I'd like to sit down and ask there's a lot of questions I have that I, I don't think we have the time tonight to go into uh, about this density thing. And I think that's, that is the thing that's going to either make it or not make it. Because I see this in other cities and I see where it's going and I see what's happening today. Where cities are, sprawl is out, sprawl is no longer a thing we can deal with anymore. It's vertical now. And that's the density that you're talking about. So I'd like to pursue that on a one-to-one -one with you if I could later, and I think other people might have some other concerns, uh, at least other council members. One question, uh, let's go back to the library and the cost. We have the <clears throat> cost of that library now with the infrastructure and with the park, which you stated. After the county steps out of it, what is our own M cost on that library? I think it's 1.5 million. It's what? Per year? 1.5 million 1. 5 per year. 1.5 million per year after the county steps yes, back. Yes, and that's in 2017 or something like that. Okay. Okay, well, those are the things that, that I wanted to comment on, and I, uh, uh, I certainly don't want to back away from anything that's been mentioned here, and especially the universities can do nothing but bring more density to us, and more density means more money, more density means more people, more density means that we are able to build more of what we want for the future. 
So I, I am not willing to step back from the university project. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor Lord. Thank you, John. That was a great presentation. It's morbid, but it was <laughs> well presented. <laughs> well, first of all, um, you know, I've really searched my soul and gone through a lot of anguish over the city center because I'm the one that, of the council that worked actively on it, and I was just looking at my notes and um, 2004, January 21st, I had my first meeting with your wife, Jamie Cavalier, to do our first planning session, and so I, I 2004, January, 2004, January 21st. So I have uh, dedicated my time and effort into this project. So I, I really have to search my soul to make sure that any decisions I make are not selfish on my part, and that's been very difficult because it was up to me we'd build the city hall and the library and the park right now, and there'd be no question in my mind. Um, I do agree uh, with some of the things that were said tonight about uh, the economic engine that it will bring. Um, also, at this time, I agree with the cost of construction and infrastructure. And Rob, I, I, I'm going to bring up a statement I've made several times over, but we, we often ask the first year I was on council, why was some of the other cities so successful in getting economic development? And we pointed out the city of Chandler, and Chandler built their infrastructure before they had anything. Right. And people said back then, for heaven's sakes, you got fields of infrastructure. What are you doing? Much larger than what we're talking about here, though. Doesn't make I don't any disagree difference. with you. Infrastructure is infrastructure. Oh, right. So to me, the infrastructure is terribly important. It, it puts a side to the property. It's not only important for the city hall, the library. It's important uh, if we figure out how to work these universities. Um, so you know, I know it's a downturn in the economy. I know I look at people who have lost their homes, they have lost their jobs, that the economy has gone down. but. Uh, does that mean that uh, we need to dig a hole and bury ourselves for three to five years? Mm, I don't know. Uh, we're still a city. We still have to be vibrant and vital, and we still have to try to bring economic development into the city. I do believe the projects, uh, I do believe in these competing CI project, CIP projects are important, and I think we should attempt to do the top along with this. Um, I, I agree with you. I'd like to s sit down with Langford on the City Hall, and, and I'd like to know the type of businesses they've been talking to, you know, what, what's being said that we don't hear in those meetings and, and what their vision is. Um, I'm not giving up my vision for this yet. I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced that we're going to dump this, in my view, at this time. I need to be convinced a little bit more. I think you've presented uh, how we can afford to do the park, the library, and the infrastructure. And, and I, I see, in my view, that we can do this. The city's progressing. It gives all those meetings, 25 meetings, the charrette, the people that were involved, that said what they wanted, the people wanted something, a gathering place. We're giving them a park that's a gathering place. We're giving them a library. And we're giving something to the universities that's attractive. We're giving a library. So until, um, I haven't made my final decision, but I am I'm not going at this in such a depressed view as some of you are doing. And I think we should, <laughs> you are, you're looking at this as almost a burial, and I'm not going to let you do that yet. I may end up with that conclusion eventually, but uh, at this point, I'm not there. Um, and so I'm standing firm at this point on going ahead and uh, taking some action on the city center. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you. Uh, first of all, very good briefing. Thank you. uh, and I, I think I would agree if, if, in fact, we have to, we find this, uh, that we can't overcome the situation we're in, that the library in the four acres sort of makes sense. But, you know, this is a time to excel also. And, and I, I'm not willing to write this off yet either. Uh, I was thinking about, we're going to have STA funding, and I'm not asking for any comment. I, I, I am going to ask that we considered why do we have to make a decision in November or October? I think we need more study based on a situation we really weren't ready for, and, uh, and, and for good reason. But uh, we've got the existing building that we could sell or rent or do something with. I don't know what's planned for that building, but we own it. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got the 44 acres, which are, their value is decreased. 
and it would be nice to hold them until the economy recovers, but that's another thing that we can <coughs> generate revenue from, from. And land is selling out there, but the prices aren't very good, admittedly. But it's still an option. We've got the SGA coming with funding, and Brian, you know better than I do, starting in 17. Projected as of now, they're looking at the numbers again because of the hit on the tourism industry. Uh, but they're, they'll be coming back to us on projections as far as does that still hold. Well, maybe they should have Glendale and, uh, and Phoenix sign their agreements. <laughs> yeah, well, does that change? Yeah. I mean, does our what? agreement change? What? Does our agreement no, it change? So they haven't change. signed their, they haven't they signed their agreements. Money, they well, it, yeah, so just okay. based on tax revenues, hotel and, and rental cars. And then uh, one thing we haven't, uh, labor and uh, material costs are declined, uh, de have declined, and are the numbers we're looking at here, are they preceding that decline, or are they current? They're assuming the decline. Because we were talking 60 million a year or two ago, and it still says 60 million. So That's just the, from the original plan, but we're, in the calculations we're doing, we're assuming that there will be a 30 percent decline in construction prices. Way back. I don't understand that. That wasn't reflected on the chart, on the numbers, I don't believe. Uh, but anyway. What was, the, what was the question again? What was the uh, statement? Do again? the numbers that were, have been presented right. uh, reflect the new expectation in uh, material and labor oh, cost I see. decline? Okay. You're hitting, you're hitting on a point that I, I've been concerned about, and that's that we're building to that number, not necessarily taking advantage of that discount that may exist in the market. So maybe they can explain a little bit more. Sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, we, we absolutely – there was a number, if, if you remember, is around $67 million in, initially. That included some of the finance costs. We have absolutely been looking at current conditions, working with the, partner, the Langford partners and their team, uh, they are every single day uh, literally looking at what the construction costs, the trends, things like that. So we are ac absolutely managing to current market conditions. We're also going through a value engineering exercise to try and reduce what we can out of the project to bring those costs even lower. So it is. It's current conditions, what you see. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, another point is, uh, well, I've talked about the existing building, the acreage that we have. We're, we're, we want to build a university campus, and that's very attractive to, obviously, offices and businesses. Uh, but it might also be a source of stimulus funding. And I think what we have to do, if we start to think of this as a integrated package of city hall, library, universities, uh, performing arts, and that sort of thing, and think of it in that context, does that make it more desirable to us receiving some stimulus money? I don't know. ASU would know better than I about the one end of it, but I know a city hall by itself isn't going to generate the stimulus, but university construction might. So maybe we need to talk about it as an integrated whole, just see if that generates anything for us. I, I guess my, my point is that I'm not ready to make a decision, and I don't know that I will be in a month, but uh, I am ready for us to see is there, you know, to keep looking at this in a positive way, can we capitalize on some of these opportunities? They're not great opportunities, but I, I really think that's a chance for the people here, the staff and our citizens and council to excel. And, and we need to keep looking at this with a positive mind, in my opinion. And so, but deciding in a month or two is going to be tough for me, I think. But anyway. Uh, we can move on unless it's <coughs> John, do we know, <clears throat> I'm sure we know, I'd, not, I'd like, like to have the figure on it. How much outlay do we have on our current leases? Well, we have that figure. Do you recall? It's one point, it's roughly a million for Benita. Right. And I want to say it's a uh, 100,000 or something for the library, et cetera. We'll get those. We have those but figures. We'll get we'll them. We'll bring those back. But they should be thinking it because Consideration with what the mayor brought up. Thank you. Jim. Rob? Real quick, and I was flipping through my stuff while I was making comments, but I think it's important that you walk out of here with each one of us, maybe, or maybe not each one of us, but at least some idea of where you're at on your uh, CIP recommended priorities. And I wrote down and prioritized the 14 or so that you had in there, and three of my top five 
personally end up on your top five list in terms of the police fire radio, the 911, the telecom. Those are important factors, and we've talked about that in the past, and they're often overlooked because they're buried or they're on the hip of some officer or some firefighter with a radio buried down in the Strayer Mountain Ranch. Um, and so just knowing the shortcomings there, totally, wholly support your, uh, your move on that. What, you know, obviously um, that impacts our discussion on the city center for, for me, but I think it's important that we get that stuff done. We've been talking about that for five, 10 years, 15 years, in terms well, of some of the inadequacies. And in some of the so, cases, we're running out of time. I mean, we, we don't have any choice. Sec second. I don't think any of us disagree with that. I don't think so, so either. There's, there's support for those three projects. And, and, you, you need to do those. I mean, yes. To the mayor's question, the old building, the old city hall, I thought was public safety or police. Right now. No, we talked about moving in the them into that in the future and holding that corner on Van City Hall. Yes. Yes. The that IOB. is going to be a public safety building right. in the interim. Would the IT department be moved also? Uh, the IT department will not be moved. It will stay in there. What the thought was was that uh, we will go into the City Hall. IT would go into the IOB, the uh, interim office building, and the police and fire would go into the IOB. The police and fire and IT would be in that building. And we so project that it would cost us a million and a half? Yes, it's something like to that. basically Real close. remodel and make it livable for the police and the fire departments. Or they could stay where they are. Well, for yeah. the lease. For yeah. the lease, yeah. If if the building is worth some significant amount of money. True. Yeah. We have not had that appraised we have in not. a while. We also need to look at other properties that the city owns. That yes. We haven't discussed for a long time. Was it, was well, I know we have Duncan Farms and some other properties yeah. that, yeah. Was the assumption that 911 services would move into IOB or would they stay down the street? Uh, they will probably expand. It's foolish to, we have to do a new system. It's foolish to do a new system in the IOB only to move it again. So what we're looking at is that it should become a part of the Public Works corporate yard where the future public safety administration building is going to be so that we only construct it once. And so that's what we're looking at is something around the 157th Street plant. Okay. And have we looked at the uh, creation of jobs and the building of a city center and the city hall and what that brings to the city? Uh, Just that add one that to slide I, I mentioned, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, I forgot it. There was so much, John. Yeah, there was a lot to do that. Just add a great presentation. I thought it was very thorough from a guy who's a numbers driven, so. Thank you. Okay, seeing no further comment then, if everybody agrees, then we'll, uh, why don't we start a meeting at 6? Is that okay? This meeting's adjourned.